Vitality kind of became a super system of looking at health in a simplistic way where you have diet, exercise, sleep, and mindset. And each of those is a wheel, um, uh, uh, like a spoke on the wheel of vitality. And if those are turning and each of them is working as they should, then you have vitality. It's like I call it energy economics. Is Then you have a net surplus of energy which will then you know, feed your brain and, and, and you know, enhance your mood and get you to help the old lady across the street and all the wonderful mm-hmm. things that make us human. Uh, but when you are down, and we could all relate to this, right? I mean, when you're down in energy, when you're just not feeling well, when you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and trying to just get through your day, um, you know, that's when we're not our best selves. And that's usually a product of our inability to extract energy from our food well. And it's our inability to recover and and use our, our recovery systems the way they're supposed to. I mean, we just push through. We push and, and spend a lot of energy um, trying to, you know, just do more every day. And that's not necessarily the winning uh, formula for people who are, you know, in it for the long haul. And let's face it, we all, we're all living longer, uh, but the quality of life is diminishing because we just don't feel well. We don't have the energy and don't feel like doing anything anymore. We went to Africa and we looked at the original settings uh, under which our, our ancestors kind of stumbled out of the last ice age from. And, you know, what did food look like? What did stress look like? And, you know, getting chased by a lion or, you know, feeling like your family is starving to death and needing to go, you know, make things happen drove our survival genes and helped us thrive. But the circuitry that lights up in the brain when you're in fight or flight and the endocrinology, the stuff that happens uh, under the hood um, is really uh, telling. And, and if you look at how the chronic stress has plagued our civilization at this point, especially Western civilization, you can see why people are making poor decisions. Because when when we're in trouble, what happens is the body will reallocate blood and resources and energy to the big muscles to get us in and out of a situation. But what that does is it also pulls the blood out of the prefrontal cortex into the hind brain, so we can just be quick and instinctive, and uh, you know quickly you know triage this this disaster and or you know try to avert it uh, and then go back to rest and digest. What happens with us is the stress never ends and we constantly cue our brains to pull the blood back into the hindbrain. But that prefrontal cortex is where we have our higher moral reasoning. It's where our negation of impulses happen. It's where we see that cookie and say to ourselves, no, you don't need that right now versus devouring it because you're starving and you're stressed and you're hungry and then you wake up you know out of your fog an hour later and realize you just you know put down six cookies because you just weren't feeling yourself and so these are the types of things that happen with stress these are the types of things that happen when we trigger our survival circuitry which was there to get us in and out of crisis situations and now every time you open up your property tax bill or you know some car cuts you off on on the motorway the same circuitry lights up and our bodies are just not geared up to live there. So how do you manage stress? What do you do to avoid that type of toxic buildup of cortisol and adrenaline and things? It becomes really kind of the question of our generation because we are really, really compressed. We're, we're under a lot of stress and it's making us make bad decisions and it's causing us to not be as, as cool with each other. And um, it's also telling our physiology to store fat around the waistline um, and uh, basically conserve it for a rainy day. And all of these things are why people keep going to the doctor and why people keep going on crash diets all the time. And I was just tired of seeing all the nonsense out there. I mean, everyone's on a diet all the time. And no one's looking at the core cause, which is, you know, the, the stress response and, and a lot of it's, you know, the, the terrible food choices that, that are made by just eating manufactured foods that the body doesn't recognize as food. And that's just the, the departure from nature and, and how the body is having a hard time with that.